Hi, Mick Garvey from Ergon World and uh, Shooting Country TV. We're here on uh, another permission. Uh, I've got plenty of red squirrels in here uh, and very few, if any, grey squirrels. The camera's picked up a grey squirrel, so I've had to drop everything else I've got to get this grey squirrel. Hopefully there's only one, generally there's more than one, but it's only picking one up on a camera, but it depends uh, if they're feeding on the floor, they're ratching around by the trees. So today's, today's mission is to catch up with this grey squirrel uh, and get rid of it. Yeah, one one grey is too many when it comes to a, an area like this that's full of reds, because uh, one red can one grey can wipe up the whole colony of uh, of reds out if it's uh, if it's got the pox and it passes it on. So everything else has been dropped today. The mission get this grey. Thelma's just picked out two right on the brow of the top of the hill. Uh, I'm assuming they, they could be reds, they could be greys. Uh, but the way they were moving looked like two young greys. It's just a case of being patient now. They know where the food is. Hopefully they'll be coming down the hill and coming straight to it. If it's reds, that's a good thing. If it's greys, it's a good thing because I'm here waiting for them. So I uh, just have to set about waiting and be patient. Right, the single one come back out now. I can just see it on the brow hill. It seems to be halfway up a tree. There's far too much branches and stuff in between us to take a shot at that. But uh, it'll be coming down to the feeder, hopefully. As you can see, we're using a fallen tree for a hide. This has worked out perfect. That's the trunk of the tree, perfect height to sit on. The root base that's gone over, perfect camouflage. Uh, it also keeps out of wind when it's blown this way. So again, we're just waiting. It's up there. I've got a feeling it might have heard us. As always with this uh, red squirrel conservation, it's all about being patient. If you prepare for them, they will come, without a doubt. Uh, the camera's showing it in the middle of the reds, but uh, I'm hoping it's not too great. Otherwise, uh, the problem's bigger than I thought it was. another one but I can see something else it's definitely a squirrel deep in the woods I can also hear something chattering uh, two different areas if we get the one I'll be satisfied that that's the one we've been after if it's the one that's coming from the bike if uh, if the two come down from the top of the hill that's grazed as well then we need to uh, Plan some more return visits. A little bit about the, the stuff we're using. We're using the Pulsar XQ35 Axion. Lovely little handle unit. Fits lovely into your palm. Good picture through the woods. Any heat source out there, if you pick it up straight away. Battery life on this is phenomenal. I've had it running all day when I've been out with it, uh, not, not a problem. And I'm, you, you can be out easily eight hours when I'm out with the, uh, the squirrels. You have to make sure, the more you, the more options you use on it, such as like the Wi-Fi, recording, uh, that'll obviously drain the battery, but if you just use it as a spotter, you're fine. Spare batteries, charged up in no time. Cracking little unit.
patience is virtue. They're definitely around, just in case I wait them to be. They might have, they might have spooked them coming into here. The ground's as dry as anything, even though the recent rains, it's not really dried anything out. And it's just like walking on cornflakes. So you have to be really careful with putting your feet. You'll notice that there was these green patches of moss and grass. You can try and make your approach using that, then that'll keep you, you know, the, the noise of your approach down to a minimum. Uh, heel and toe, obviously just walking to the ground. Uh, just trying to avoid any branches, snaps and constant noise. The odd snap will happen, things drop out of trees and make little noises, but when you get a constant noise, the squirrels will pick up on it. But they seem to be more, more concerned or more aware of movement. So, as you'll notice when I'm behind here, any movements I'm making, I'm trying to make really slow. Try not to create any sudden thing, any sudden movement, so that to, so as not to alert them. Uh, need to try everything to get on top of this one. This is a really important one that we need to get. Uh, in the past, I've sat out eight hours for a single squirrel. We've got it, and to be honest, I don't mind if they're the same again, because, uh, like I say, one, one red can, one grey can wipe out all the reds. So we've got to keep on top of it. <coughs> I think it's worth taking a bit of time talking about how you dress when you're out in the woods. Recently I've been wearing the uh, the Shooter King Forest Mist Digital Camo. It seems to blend in in more situations. Uh, you can tell from, from here, the sunshine on one side, it's not too bright. Blends in really well. I can move around slowly, like I say, and not being seen. It's also very silent. You can walk through the woods. You get some nylon ones, and they they rub and they make quite a bit of a noise. This is almost completely silent. Uh, comfortable. I also wear something quite large, so you don't restrict me when I'm shouldering the gun. Padded knees, waterproof. I've sat in a chair that I've got in the middle of the wood. And the seat's been damp, but nothing seeped through. Give me a bit of a damp bum. It's worked really well. Uh, I've also got the snood uh, neck cover, which also, if you start getting a sunshiny face like it is on this side, it shows white. Helps cuff it up a bit, but luckily from that direction, we don't need it. But uh, come the cooler days, we will do. Uh, like I say, it's the it's the Shooter King Forest Mist Digital Camo. Uh, really impressed with it. Nice and comfortable, nice and warm, waterproof, uh, and silent. I can hear things moving now, so something's happening. Another item I'm going to be using from Shooter King is the I Heat electrically heated jelly. Uh, not needed today. Maybe tonight if we if we're out tonight, it starts getting a bit cool. But it's just a, a jelly type zip up vest, powered by a, a battery bank. Put it on, press the button, instant heat. Three settings. Uh, Perfect for the winter conditions when you don't want to wear too many clothes. You need a little bit of movement. Uh, I've used it already a couple of nights when it's been pretty cold, uh, and it's it's a, um, an amazing thing. Uh, like I say, just it's a USB connection, plugs into a battery bank. Keep the battery that, the battery in your pocket. Uh, there's a button on the chest, roughly where this button is here. Uh, three settings: uh, high, medium, and low. Uh, even without it on, it's got a silver lining, and that reflects the body heat and keeps you warm as well. So it's uh, it's a belting little item. Might have to wear it instead of putting heating on the house. Just 
caught sight of something then through the thermal. Uh, climbing beside a tree. Anyway, it's a woodpecker. Uh, obviously, the thermal picked the heat source out and it wasn't quite clear. There's a few trees in the way. The ideal thing about the, the scope I'm using, which is the Pulsar Digix C50, it's a digital vision night, day night scope, is that there's no mistake in anything you're shooting at. Uh, in the day mode, in full colour, you can see whether it's a red or a grey squirrel. Uh, you can even tell the difference between a male and a female woodpecker. Uh, it'll pick out the wood pigeon. It'll tell a wood pigeon from a crow, from a magpie. Uh, whereas sometimes with the thermals, it'll pick up a heat source and it'll tell it's a bird. You're not necessarily going to tell them what sort of bird it is. But the scope is a cracking thing. Uh, front focusing. Menu access from the side button, all the usual colour palettes, various reticles, uh, various uh, groups for different guns, for different zeros and zero ranges. Uh, instant between black and white and colour by just a single press on the on off button, which is quite a nice feature. Zoom is by the button on the on the on the front uh, on on the back here at the side. And the record buttons on the back as well. Uh, onboard battery, and you also get a, a battery that can fit in it. I think it's the uh, the, the stick type battery, the IPS is it or ISIP? What it is? Uh, plenty of plenty of power then to take you over through the night and well into the day. Uh, for me, it's lasted all day again, and I'm nowhere near flat. Uh, yeah, all in all, cracking scope. It is a weighty thing, uh, but it's also got record, uh, sound uh, sound record, which is a good thing if you if you need to record for your videos. I've got it mounted on the Air Arms S510 tactical rifle, which uh, I'm quite honoured to say I was I had a little bit of input into the into the design of this when they first came about. Uh, 0.25. FAC, it's probably about 40 odd foot pound, uh, 10 shot mics, probably getting 3 mics, 4 mics perhaps at most uh, on full power. Lovely gun, I love the tactical guns as you all know. Uh, fits well, it's got the folding stock, not the folding stock, the adjustable stock. Uh, M lock rail on the front, it's got a picketing rail on this side. It fits it out completely with a mic pull accessories, which is a stock, bipod, pistol grip. Everything's available for this on the Air Arms online shop. You get everything you need from slings, stocks, bipods, pistol grips, uh, picketing tail, picketing rail attachments connections for the sling, for the QD slings, uh, everything you're going to possibly need is online. <clears throat> so if you're thinking of pimping out your S510, check out the Air Arms online store. Uh, everything you need is on there. And as you all probably know, the quality of my pull is like second to none. It's fantastic stuff. Nice one, not going anywhere. 
<clears throat> we'll give that five minutes. And uh, let's make sure it's not with a mate. I'm going to pick that up and we're done. Light's fading. Right, the light's gone. We're going to pick that squirrel up now. Right, large female is feeding. So it's obviously got young ones around somewhere. They'll be out to the nest running around. So my fears maybe uh, may come true. Uh, there's obviously others here as well. Like I said, this is a feeding female. Uh, good one to get, but we'll have to. Uh, I have to be vigilant and get back here and get these youngsters sorted out because they will be youngsters. You can see she's feeding, or being feeding. So, looks like I'm having my work cut out here. There could be three or four of those running around. Okay, well, success for today. That's the main thing. Uh, right, let's get wrapped up and uh, head home before it gets too dark. <laughs>